episode of Chatty Broads with Becca and Jess. Are we doing it? Little? We're going to yeah. do it. Is it rolling right now? It's rolling right now. Okay, so great. Your off. husband left, so I was like, do we have to wait for the man to come back and press start? <laughs> no. Are we? We're He's really the only it? one who can get this podcast <laughs> started. We're just a couple of girls who don't know how to do any technology. No. Like, so please. he leaves for the actual podcast. Yes. yes. But he sets up. He sets it up. Oh, my God. Yeah, he yeah. sets it up because I'm like, if what he's a hero. <laughs> yeah. hero. I'm like, if he's sitting there. No. I can't fully, I can't talk about my new boyfriends. No. <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable. No, we actually almost always just record by ourselves. I don't think we've ever really had someone sit in. So, like one time someone's brought like a, a friend when they're the guest and I'm like, it's weird. <laughs> That's a lot. The whole time. Because they're also not on mic, so they're not in a vulnerable position of being recorded. Yeah. Well, and then I feel bad because I'm like, do you want a mic too? Right. But then I'm like, but I don't know who you are. We have literally done that. Yes. We have literally brought someone on mic, the child of someone that uh, that we had on as the guest. Wow. And we said, do you, should your son just did it? I would not have done it. But it ended up being really good. But she was just like, your son, do you, should you sit on <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what are you doing? How old was he? Oh, well, he was like a teenager. He was a teenager. Oh, okay. And he was fantastic. It was but, good, actually. But my people-pleasing <laughs> tendencies were just like, do you want a mic too? Like, I just can't, you know, I just can't let it go. Such a good hostess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know about that. Just it's because we're in your house. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. You're like, do you need some water? Do you need a water, a mic? <laughs> do, you need, do you need to promote something? <laughs> what, what do you need to do? Do you have any <laughs> baseball games coming up that you want to plug? <laughs> shout out to your friends <laughs> yeah i know i used to do a podcast with two of my friends and we during covid obviously like had some like zoom guests and there was one where somebody brought like their publicist was on the zoom like just kind of <laughs> just making sure that they don't I think just making sure they didn't say something which i'm like it wasn't like some edgy guest who seemed like they were gonna say something crazy or offensive right but i don't know if they were just like well, I'm the publicist. This is what I do. Yeah. Because I'd never seen that with I've a podcast. I've seen people do that before, like, yeah, bringing their manager along to things mm-hmm. like that. And I'm like, that just seems like a weird way to try to flex. Like, you're not that yeah. important that your manager needs to come along with you to this, like, e-news blurb right, for four exactly. minutes. Like, all right, there. You're standing in front of a green screen. Also, <laughs> if your manager has time to go to a podcast, <laughs> you're not, not a great manager, probably. <laughs> good look for your manager. It's not a great sign. I know my manager's schedule. I'm grateful she calls me back. Like I would be, I would fire her so quickly if she was like, "I'll just come hang." <laughs> She's always just like, pod. "Taylor, where are you? You're at lunch. I'll come by. Let's just talk shop." Yeah, I'll come with the pod. Let's I do the quick like, interview. I feel like we've talked about this on the podcast before, but I had the funniest experience one time where I was like on a on a on a panel on someone's like, you know that thing that like come. It's like the free show that comes up like on your Samsung TV where it's like uh, pop yeah. daily, you know, right, like, right, you know, right, you know right. what I'm talking yes. about? It's one of those shows. Like so, the hotel room shows. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, like it's called, I don't know. The ones I don't that like regal yeah. Yeah. before the movie. Yeah. It's like, wow, news at like 2.30 PM. Uh-huh. So I was like on a panel on one of those shows. And so I just, you know, showed up and there was four other people on the panel and they had like their team with them. You know, it was like, they brought their assistant their makeup artist, their manager, whoever had like three people sitting around all of them. And I was also like the youngest one there. And they were all kind of like pseudo celebrity mothers in like their like early 40s, late 30s. Mm-hmm. And so I was just kind of sitting there like, God damn, like I do not know what I like. <laughs> I got to do something different here. And the guy, the mic guy who's miking everyone up asked me to move. He goes, hey, we're miking people up. Can you like move to the side? And I was like, You're like I'm one of the panels. <laughs> Oh my god! Hey, I'm actually one of them too. I know I don't have like an entourage of people with me. Which I is, also need yeah. a mic. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> not to inconvenience you, but I need one too. <laughs> but I'd like a mic and a glass of water. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that was interesting. But I, but it's funny to me where people like want they need like their team to serve to to yeah. buffer them yeah, when yeah, they go yeah. places. Okay. Well, should we just get into this? Yeah. I mean, we're already listen, broads. 
the guest who we've been talking to over the past few minutes brought an entire <laughs> team with her. Yeah, that's that's insane. Insane. I was gonna say that's why Taylor has her manager assistant and makeup artist. They're in the living room. Living room. Yeah. yeah, there's 17 people. Everyone's They're all entertaining making them. So many calls. Yeah, <laughs> it's Taylor Tomlinson. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank I'm you. So excited. Okay, before we dive into our conversation with the amazing Taylor Tomlinson broads, if the recent resurgence of velour tracksuits and low-rise denim has proven one thing, it's that what was once old will always become new again, so it's in your best interest to have at least one super reliable vintage source, because if you're like me, you toss those low-rise jeans out and had high hopes you would never ever have to see them again, but you know, here we are. Oh my god, yes. I never thought I'd see the day when everyone else was looking for those again. I've been in love with them still since 2005, so I'm loving it. But alas, here we are. One of the first places I go when looking for specific vintage trends is on ThreadUp. They're the largest online thrift store where you can save up to 90% off everything from Gap to Gucci, baby. And just for our listeners, ThreadUp is offering a deal on your first order. Head to ThreadUp.com and get up to an additional 50% off plus free shipping on your first order. That's ThreadUp.com for an extra 50% off plus free shipping on your first order just by heading to ThreadUp.com. That's T H R. E-D-U-P dot com for up to 50% off and free shipping on your first order. It's so good to see a home and a marriage in Los <laughs> Angeles. In Los yeah. Oh my God, it's so refreshing. You're like, is this fake? Yeah, a little. I'm like, this is just a lot. A, a is giant a dog. <laughs> and the kids at school. You oh know, my so God, you a have child. a kid too? Yeah. Oh, fuck you, man. Yeah. How old's your kid? <laughs> she's six. Oh my God. Yeah. I bet she's so cute too. She's she's a, a fun <laughs> handful. Like, I just, I just met you, but like you and your husband are like a hot, like oh LA God, couple. I bet so your kid's much. so cute. She's uh, she wants an agent, and oh so my that's going to be that's that's going to be the uh, the drama of our lives. Where she's oh. like, "I'm going to be famous," and we're like, "Yikes, we're not going to yeah. take you to auditions yeah. right now because we've seen what that does in Los Angeles." But yeah. maybe one day, maybe you know what? Day. But Gray and I, our parents did that to us, and we still hold it against them to this day. Really? We're like, we wanted to be stars, and our parents <laughs> wouldn't let us, so we had to forge our own way. <laughs> yeah, no, I always wanted to do like commercials and stuff, and I actually do wish my parents would let me do it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's always the wrong choice you know what I mean always. Always. you do it or you don't do it's it it's always the wrong choice but like every kid just wants to be famous now like I have That's friends true. who have kids and they're like oh they just want to be like a YouTuber now but you know what's crazy is it actually is available to everyone yeah. now like I remember when Which I was wild. a kid we actually thought we would get cast at like the Disney castings at the mall like we actually thought right. we were going to become like the next uh, I don't know who uh, Lizzie McGuire or whatever but then now you can literally do it you can become a tech star yeah at age eight from yeah. your home what from about, your home what about at age 33 because i'm <laughs> trying now okay this is, <laughs> let's get into tiktok this is a gross example but like the the paul brothers like jake and logan oh right l- came from the midwest mm-hmm. and were like making youtube videos in their backyard at like age yeah. 12 they, really, they did that shit. They really did it. <laughs> oh, I know. There's so many people like that. Like, and there's, you know, examples that are seem like better people. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah. yeah. That you're like, oh, you just, you're just talking on TikTok. That's mm-hmm. all you do is you just talk in a way that's comforting right. to people. And you have millions of followers. And God knows if you make any money off of this. But like... Yeah, you never know about the money. Then again, we talk followers. for our careers and so do you. Yeah, so but this is different yeah. than TikTok. TikTok is like... There's, you know, they're like one to three minute videos and I'm right. not diminishing TikTokers. Yeah, but they're less. This is like, a podcast is a lot of you're work. Produ- no, you're you're like, producing it. You're yeah. like, I've spent years grinding right. <laughs> to perfect. Which, speaking of, I'm so excited that you are here because a couple weeks ago, and I've been a fan of yours for a while, Taylor, but a couple weeks ago, I went to the comedy store and you performed. And I have to tell you, I like... And I go often and I love comedy. I have not laughed that hard in a long fucking time. Oh, thank you. It must have been a good night. Your (laughs) new material, I was just, I mean, I was, it was so, so, so good. So good. Thank you. Um, That's so nice. And I'm assuming a lot of people listening, we've had many 
uh, of our listeners asked, like, get Taylor Tomlinson on. So we know oh, a lot of nice. listeners. Thanks, guys. But yeah, why don't you say something assist. about yourself for the people who don't know who yes. you are, what you oh, do. Oh, I have to sell yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Introduce yourself. <laughs> I mean, I'm a wildly famous TikToker. No. <laughs> uh, I'm a stand-up comedian, mm-hmm. and I have a new special coming out on Netflix on March 8th. Yes. Is that is that enough about what me? What a great time to promote. I know. No like time like that. the present. I already have one. It's called Quarter Life Crisis. It came out a week before everything shut down for the pandemic so exactly two years ago and uh yeah now the new one's out and it's um a lot about like mental health and therapy and uh relationships and childhood trauma and Mm. all that good stuff all the things we love Um, all the things we love (laughs) when did you get to the point where you started confidently calling yourself a stand-up comedian today because i was gonna say when you said that you kind of didn't make eye contact and i was like i'm a comedian comedian. if that's okay um (laughs) also i'm one of the panelists i need a mic and a water uh i I don't know. You know what? I think it was honestly once I got on like late night, mm. which was when I was like 23. I started when I was 16. So once I got like a Conan set, I was like, okay, this, I can say it now, right? I've been full time since I was 21. Um, but I was performing at like colleges and stuff a lot. I think when I got Quarter Life Crisis, the the first hour special on Netflix, I was like, I think I don't have to go back to school. Uh Like it took that long for me to be like, I for sure don't have to finish that last year of college (laughs) now. I think I'm going to be able to do this forever. And then the pandemic hit and I was like, I should go back to school. (laughs) I did not. I got on TikTok instead. But (laughs) yeah, it took a long time for me to feel like I had earned it. I suppose. And then some people don't feel that at all and are like, I'm a comedian. And you're like, you work at Best Buy. (laughs) You're like, well, you have never made me laugh in your life. Yeah. Please don't say that. But what did you say before that? Did you just say like, oh, I am trying to dabble in comedy, you know, like, yeah. I did stand up. I think you just go like, I do stand up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because like that was like saying I make art instead of like I'm an artist. That's exactly Mm -hmm. right. It's Mm -hmm. like saying I make art instead of I'm an artist. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's rough. I feel like there's a lot of probably um, what do you call it? Imposter syndrome that comes with that. Hundred thousand percent. But also I was a teenager. Yeah. You know, you were sixteen when you started. I was sixteen when I started. And so it wasn't like people were like, What's your career? Like yeah. I was in co- I quit college to be a full time stand up. So I didn't really get to a place in my adult life where people were like, But what's your job sure. job? Sure. Right. Cause I've been very lucky uh in that in that respect. So I never really had to deal with that. But I mean, I still have like crazy imposter syndrome. Like I'm constantly like people are going to figure out that I suck right. somehow. Like I I think maybe people already think that and everyone's just lying to me. Like everyone would lie to you. Like, mm-hmm. do you ever feel like that? You're like, I guess everybody just got together yeah. and had a meeting and, <laughs> and decided. Like, She's not going to be OK if we don't encourage her in these ways. So right. let's just pretend. Yes. It's so or this nuts. is like Shutter Island. Like everyone's yes. actually created this whole situation because yeah. I'm mm-hmm. a basket case and they've got to <laughs> keep me sane mm-hmm. for the rest of my life. Yeah. That would actually be kind of nice, though. Yeah. I know it doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> it doesn't sound terrible. I mean, if they can keep it up, I just don't want to, don't I let don't me get to that lighthouse. <laughs> do, do not want to figure that out. Okay. Well then how did you get into stand up in the first place? Like how, how, Oh, it's so uncool. The story, my dad wanted to take a stand up comedy class at a church when I was in high school and that's how I started. And he did, he wasn't like, you're going to be a comedian. He was like, you can write for me maybe like, so <laughs> and then you were just good at it or you yeah. just loved it i was just good at it and i loved it and the guy who taught that class would have me like open for him like i started in churches super uh-huh. weird yeah, yeah. so i was like very clean until i was like 22 and then i was like i don't want to do this anymore like i just i just i was performing everywhere i was doing like colleges and clubs and some churches here and there but i didn't want to be like a church comedian so i got to a point where i was like i cannot do churches anymore period mm-hmm. um no matter how much money it is, because it is like a lucrative market, <laughs> yes, unfortunately. They do pay. They do pay. They do pay. The churches pay. Yeah, because they have such a limited selection mm-hmm. of entertainment options mm-hmm. that they're like, we know how rare this is. So 
when I was like 22, I got fired from some church gig for a tweet with innuendo in it. And that joke ended up on Conan. So it all worked out. But <laughs> the I, bitches. I just like, I don't know. I forget where I was going with all this. Well, Giving your started, own background. Yeah. yeah. I, I, once I was like doing clubs and colleges and like, I wasn't like making a living off of like church work anyway it was just like occasionally and so I was like I'm just not gonna do that anymore and not have that even be something that's a part of my career and then I could kind of talk about whatever I wanted yeah. which was really nice did that take a long time for you to get there like had you been kind of beating yeah. around the bush for a while and thinking about it and complaining about it and then finally pulled the trigger or no yeah no I didn't think I was a Christian but my whole family is so I was right. like mm, okay like maybe it'll Maybe I'll get there. It's like uh -huh. when you stop being attracted to somebody and you're like, well, maybe, and you're like, maybe they'll one get a day. haircut. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, it'll. We're like, we were fine at first. And maybe now we should get married. Yeah. yeah. It's so things. strong, but. Yeah. Maybe the fire will relight. Yeah. But just for years, I had been like, Ooh, I don't know. Like my mom died when I was a kid and I was just like, mm. this seems like bullshit. Mm -hmm. Right. But I felt so guilty. And it was like my whole family and my whole world that I had a really hard time separating from it. And then I finally did. And stand up was a big part of that because I met so many different types of people, mm -hmm. like different ages, different walks of life, different backgrounds that I just wasn't that wasn't really happening where I grew up in like this conservative suburbs. Well, it's no coincidence that you're here because Jesse <laughs> facilitated this. Hello. We both come from a evangelical uh -huh. Christian background. We did it. You guys. Yeah. We did it. In fact, even, you know, her husband might have lost a church-related job because of the <gasps> podcast. Maybe. No. Long time coming. When? Yeah. Uh, numerous years ago. Are you guys still Christians? No. No. No? No. I would say, you know what's so funny? And I'm definitely not a Christian. <laughs> yeah, But yeah. it's one of those things where it's like... <laughs> I'm definitely not Christian. Ew. But... <laughs> do you know, do you still love Jesus? You know? No. It's, <laughs> no, it's one of those things. You know how it... Like, I mean, I shouldn't say this. I don't know how you feel about it. But when no, you're... let's find out. When, let, let, let's get there. When, <laughs> when you're raised in that and it's just, just part of your bones and that's like yep. all you know growing up, I'm not in a place where I could say like I don't like I have a hardcore atheist stance. Right. Same. I'm very much like, well, <laughs> if the right thing comes along, then, and I have the answers, then I'm very open to it. And I still feel like I'm pretty sp spiritual because of it. Mm. Um, but my husband is more like, I don't believe in anything. I, I feel like that's part yeah. of the gaslighting of Christianity, though, is you're either a Christian or you are an atheist. That's, that's true. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Since what is that? Either there's no God or I love Jesus. Why? Why? why are those only two? Aren't the only two options? Yeah, it's silly. The, the conclusion I came to was I have no idea what happens when we die. Uh huh. And neither do you. Yeah, join yeah. the club. Nobody does. Nobody and the fact that it. we're all pretending I that know. we think we know is so crazy. And I just decided, like, I don't want to spend my entire life trying to figure out what happens when it's over. Uh -huh. When there's no way I'm going to be able to achieve that. Oh, yeah. It's just like constant disappointment and doubt. So I just try not to think about it. Because also once I met people who were like atheists because they had just never even been exposed to religion growing up. They're like, oh, yeah, my parents. I remember I dated a guy in my early 20s uh, who was just like, yeah, we didn't. We never talked about religion. And I was like, That's like what about death? Did you think about death? And he's yeah. like, I asked my mom once, you know, what happens when we die? I'm scared. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, we're all going to die. And we don't know. But first, you're going to grow up and you're going to get married. There's and a you're lot gonna... in between. And you're yeah. like, you weren't plagued every night thinking about hell? Yes. And he was just like, no. Yeah. That's she just kind of told me, like, it'll be fun. Until you're dead. It's so wild. Now, it's also funny how there's different, like Jess and I were just talking about this recently, how she was always plagued by fear of hell. Mm -hmm. And I, meanwhile, was like, I'm going to heaven and this <laughs> shit's going to be great. And it sucks <laughs> that you guys aren't. But, you know, like it was just interesting how my perspective was always like dreaming about what heaven would be like mm -hmm. and how I was so excited. And it was just going to be the best, like all the best feelings I've ever felt. Like when all my family's in the room together and we're all laughing together, I was like, Oh, that's what heaven's going to be like. And I was so excited. And I'm then like, I, sort of, so nice. I sort of, I sort of, so nice. <laughs> Did you see? That's what that's what I thought. Heaven that sounds incredible. Like. How are you not a Christian anymore? <laughs> yeah, I know. It sounds like it was great for you. <laughs> well, and then it started, you know, that I was like, this doesn't, some of this doesn't make a lot of sense. And there's all the really bad parts too, but yeah. it was interesting how, 
there were just different experiences, even though we had a super similar upbringing where I was like, also says something about my personality, right? Where I was like, I am perfect enough to make it to heaven and I can't wait to make it there. I want to be in commercials <laughs> and I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Life is great. <laughs> That sounds incredible. I was so, I was exactly like you. I was so okay. scared of hell. So was my sister. I couldn't even wrap my head around heaven. No. I had no oh. mental picture of no. heaven. I was just like, hope that's there. I could totally picture hell. <laughs> yeah. Completely. Every inch of it. I'm like, yes. I know I can literally feel it when I'm laying in bed. Like the heat is on me. Yeah. Oh, I still, I still to this day have random massive panic attacks when I'm laying in bed, just thinking about like, what if I made the wrong choice? Yeah. I still freak out about I it. I guess I didn't yeah. think a lot of people were going to hell except like Hitler, if I'm being honest, though. Like, I guess you I, it was I, just I, I guess I thought, yeah, I guess <laughs> uh, most <laughs> people, just, hell's most pretty people going to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> well, my parent, my mom always said, like, if you have ever accepted Jesus into your heart, yeah. which was very like abstract to me, I didn't quite understand. I'm like, so, and I remember thinking this as a child, like, so are like the angels and Jesus in heaven, like they're listening to everyone. And if anyone just says even in their mind, I accept Jesus into my heart, they're good. Right. So that's kind of what I thought. Yeah. And and then my mom sort of said that it could, that that was it. You were like washed clean kind of forever. And like so someone's was- going to go to heaven and be like, <laughs> I took it back. And they're like, you said it for though. Yeah, you exactly. You said Jesus. And you're like, but then I didn't believe in Jesus and I don't belong here. They're like, nah, we count. We count we it. you in. <laughs> I think I kind of thought that and then that's so so I was always living my life too as my testimony in the making yes totally okay broads quick interruption one thing about me is that I have and always will hate going to the grocery store and any tasks before or after said grocery store trips I just like finding recipes I don't like making lists and I have a really hard time getting myself to buy newer interesting ingredients that I know I will only use once so for the past few months I've been using HelloFresh And it might be the best thing I've done for myself in a long time. I've loved them for a long time, too. So, yeah, when you use HelloFresh, you get farm fresh ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip the trips to the grocery store and you can count on HelloFresh to make to make home cooking easy, fun and affordable. And all you have to do is choose what looks good to you from HelloFresh's menu of over 50 Five zero menu and market items and truly they do the rest you get all the ingredients pre-portioned and partially prepared sent to your door with super easy to follow recipe cards and in just a matter of minutes you're gonna have a healthy delicious meal ready to eat and it may seem completely counterintuitive because you'll be eating better more gourmet fresher meals but HelloFresh will save you money. In fact, HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality, $65 per month cheaper than grocery shopping, okay? But the best part of HelloFresh is how much time you'll get back at each meal, less prep, less time cleaning, and way more time enjoying a delicious meal, all thanks to HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Chatty16 and use code Chatty16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Chatty16 and use code Chatty16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. So I don't know about you all, but my dream home is one that I truly enjoy being in, one I always regret leaving and always look forward to coming back to. And when it comes to creating the perfect space you've always wanted, there is one company that does it every single time, and that's Jenny Kane. From large furniture pieces that you can completely center your space around to those extra special finishing touches, Jenny Kane has all aspects of home decorating covered. Legitimately, if you close your eyes and you think about the most effortless, elevated, minimalist, California cool room, that is Jenny Kane, 100%. You guys, everything is so gorgeous, it actually pains me. The best way to describe the Jenny Kane aesthetic is it's clean, it's calming, it's luxurious. And come on, what space couldn't use a little more luxury? Every piece from Jenny Kane is handcrafted from the most premium materials and it's guaranteed to become the focal point of every room, whether it's a singular candle or something a little bigger. And if you're Jenny Kane obsessed, which guilty, uh, then be sure to join their rewards program, which gets you exclusive perks and benefits like birthday surprises, access to early launches. Plus, you can earn up to 10 percent back on all purchases. If you join today, you'll get 100 points just as a welcome bonus. Create the space you're never going to want to leave at JennyKane.com. Get 15% off your first order when you use code Chatty at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at 
and pay attention to the spelling. J E N N I K A Y N E dot com promo code chatty. Wow. Which look, my friend Dustin Nickerson, who opens for me, um, when on the road, which is very nice of him, uh, because he headlines a lot on his own. But he is still Christian technically, but he's like a cool Christian. Right. He's like very open minded. Like these are metaphors. Um, but is a Christian and got married at 19 and him and his wife have a beautiful relationship and they have three beautiful kids and like definitely going to heaven if there is one. Yeah. <laughs> and he's there. Yeah. And he's like, but he's like understanding when you're like, I don't, I can't mm-hmm. do this anymore. Like this is not for me. Um, but like, I do, I do definitely like connect with Christian people mm-hmm. or people who grew up that way, oh, yeah. like a little more easier I think because it's just like this background that you can't really explain but I used to like I just I felt so guilty all the time growing up I have such negative associations with it I used to like obsessively try to accept Jesus into my heart over and over I was just about to ask you I'm like did you do like the weekly yeah yeah weekly (laughs) nightly nightly i would i would say like the same prayer over and over because i thought there were like demons in my house and i'd have to like pray for protection over the house and everybody in it and like been there yeah oh the demons were always coming for me in the middle of the night (laughs) really oh yeah but you were going to heaven yes oh she were trying to tear me down i was a warrior (laughs) they were coming for me Uh, yeah everything was spiritual warfare in our house Mm -hmm, like or which is still kind of a thing which I don't, I, I really go back and forth about some of that kind of stuff because sometimes I do feel like, man, the demons are chasing me lately. Mm-hmm. And then also just kind of like dark, I, you know, there, there is like dark energy that I feel like I can, and I'm, I'm not talking about like I'm getting dark energy off her, but like, you know, sometimes you go oh, into me. a place or like a home and you get hit with yeah. kind of that like, whoa, like this is intense. Right. Like, I guess that was sort of like, Kind of the thing that I would get more is like sort of these really intense kind of dark mm. feelings, which probably were real, whatever that means. But yeah. I was kind of just like, Jesus, blood of Jesus, like come yes. on, I'm kind of terrified out of my mind. Oh, yeah. Well, like stuff you'd like heard once. You're like, oh, in the yeah. name and the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, you're yeah. like, where did I even hear yeah. in the name and the blood? <laughs> Wash me with your blood. Ew. Hey, isn't that weird for non-Christians? Like how much we talked about blood and covering in blood and washing in blood. Oh, oh my God, so much. It's really gross. Yeah. My new special, my entire closing joke, it's like six minutes long and it's all about like being so scared to masturbate Graham because I thought I would go to hell and how you didn't even know. Did you know we could masturbate when you were a kid? Did you even know that women did that? Oh, okay. Well, I did it. I was very much, we've talked about okay. this before. I was very much like a, like a couch humper. Because oh, it was like, okay. it was the unintentional masturbation mm. where I was like, you that cool. is nice and it feels <laughs> good. And then I'll just finish. But I'm like, I don't know what it is. Right. But my, I know we can, <laughs> but yeah. my family was very, and <laughs> this is so weird Then when you get older and then you meet other Christians and you're like, oh, your families were okay with that. Our sect was like no masturbation ever. Yeah. Did your parents ever say that though? Did your oh, parents my, say that? Uh, my parents didn't uh, super did, did address it. Did your church it. talk about it? Oh, yes. Really? About oh, masturbation? Yeah. No masturbation. Mine didn't. How Mine didn't talk about it either. How old am I now? Yeah. 28. Okay. Yeah, I'm 27. I was like, is this is this maybe slightly next gen? Because I also remember in my Christian private school, we read this book that was like a sex book. And like the author in that book said that it was okay to like masturbate and even kind of like hump when you were kissing. What? what? Which my teacher did say, I don't agree with everything in this book. But then, and and then she said like, parents, you know, I want you to kind of like read along with this book with your kids. And I made a note that like, my mom wasn't into the making out thing. She with that even, she was like, no. But my mom did not say anything about masturbation. My parents never did. My church never did. Yeah, my parents never did. I listened to a, like a podcast. I don't even think it was necessarily all about purity, but a lot of it was. Yeah. I listened to a podcast when I was a teenager um, and it was a youth pastor who would like do sermons mm-hmm. for teens. And he was talking about how you're not supposed to masturbate because of what you're picturing, mm. but it's okay mm-hmm. to pray for a wet dream oh for men. Again, none of this is for women. He's like, you can pray for a wet dream for the relief. <laughs> So you don't get blue balls or whatever. Like he was like, a lot of people will pray for it. 
and God will like gift that to you. But what you're thinking I'm start about is for the those sin. before I go to bed I now. I'll be like, God, what? I don't know if I believe in you anymore, yeah. but I would love a hot, hot dream. <laughs> what? Because I was, I was so, I was trying so hard to be like pure and good and whatever. Sure. I was like listening to a podcast. Oh my you, were yeah. trying sermons. you were trying your best. Yeah, I really yeah. was. And it just like, it, the, it was so crazy to me that that was the that was the solution because they were like yeah it's it's not really the physical sensation it's what you're thinking it's the like the lust well yeah because then i got like i knew or i knew porn was wrong so yes, like i, knew I porn definitely was wrong. Mm-hmm. knew that was wrong and i shouldn't look at that on the internet and i'd try not to but th- i did sort of th- I, I think i in my head conceptualized that if i was just masturbating purely with the sensation that was okay you know what i'm saying like that is that is pure that's my that's the what my closer in the special is about oh really it's about it's (laughs) absolutely and i didn't know other people did that until i started doing that joke because the joke is about me telling a friend of mine who Mm -hmm. like grew up cool in la yeah yeah and like has had every sexual experience in the world like me just saying like oh i don't think about any i still masturbate that way i'm like i don't think about anything i don't watch porn and she was like what You're like i meditate on <laughs> are my you pleasure okay? literally yeah literally <laughs> it's i'm so glad to, to, i showed it to a friend of mine and she was like i do that too <laughs> that's also how i do it and i was like are we all just so fucked up yes we are right yes okay yes i think so i think so i think that's sometimes the joy and i mean most all of us are but sometimes the joy of then meeting other like ex-evangelicals where you're like this is a very specific thing that i feel so i'm glad to know yeah you know i um, to me it was the masturbation was fully off the table okay so it was everything it was everything about it was the shame it was all it was shame 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 and i already felt so bad about everything yeah i remember masturbating for the first time once i had moved out of my parents home yeah and it was one of those masturbation sessions that lasted for 24 hours Mm. in my my Mm -hmm. alone room and i basically came up after 24 hours just like drenched in sweat (laughs) and i was like baptized (laughs) fully (laughs) renewed and baptized and i was like oh this is the devil yeah. This, and I'm like, oh, this is the devil. This pleasure oh, must be the warfare. devil. Yes. You know, the fact that I got that I wasted an entire day just caught here. You know, I still so feel good. that though. I still feel uh shame and guilt if I feel as though I have wasted time mm. pertaining to anything sexual. I'm like, that's a like I, I definitely still yeah. deal with that. Yeah. Sure. I think I have trouble. And this is not even something I've realized until right now, this conversation. I'm getting a lot out of this podcast. Uh (laughs) I think I have trouble being attracted to people physically because of this shit. Uh Uh-huh. Like, I'm always like, I'm always like, I don't know if people are attractive. Like, I always have to, like, send my friends pictures of people I'm interested in. I'm Mm -hmm. like, is this person hot? (laughs) They're like, this person is really hot. I'm like, okay, I, I feel like I have, like, not, like, face blindness, but I feel like I have attraction blindness like i just really cannot tell well, if somebody's well, and if you've been, no, you, know, you, you know taylor man looks like at the outward of the appearance but god looks <laughs> at the heart so that actually means that you are i'm going to have closer it. to god yes. okay good you are godly that's, that's why you can't tell right. if they're hot or not you're I looking at their heart oh my god i can't and i can't see their heart nobody puts a picture <laughs> of their heart on hinge i yeah it's really it's a lot like whenever my friends are like oh my god i just want to like fuck that guy i'm like how do you know? <laughs> you Have really you seen know? his heart? <laughs> Are you sure you want to enter into that kind of connection with him? Yeah, I really can't until I like know them more. But it makes so much sense too if you're if all of your like masturbating is like basically yeah. like black screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're just like <laughs> mm-hmm. so all the pleasure is derived from just nothingness yeah. i masturbate to the end of the soprano it's yeah. just a black screen just the credits. Like, this is so good there's something about rolling text that really turns me on it's so wild though you know what you were saying though earlier that i really resonate with is how so my this this current boyfriend the one i have two kids with and i've been dating for four years um he has this is another thing I know you can relate to. When someone says like, no, I went to church growing up and you're like, mm. 
Yeah. Cute. Did you really? Cute. Like, Are you yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you were so you guys it was so perfect. Like, you went to mass with your parents every once in a while. Like, like that is, you don't know. Like, you went to Christmas? Oh, was that nice? Was I had that a hard? subscription to Brio magazine. I had three different Bible covers that I would alternate with my outfit. Do you like, know what Kiwana says? Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't think so. Do you know Agape your- love? Have you heard of it? <laughs> Mm, didn't think so, honey. I can't throw out my handouts <laughs> from church because I filled in all the blanks and I might need to go back and look at these sermons. So just put them in the pocket. The yeah. front pocket. You don't have a laminated purity card yeah. in your wallet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, a purity card? Oh, I, yeah, I didn't have that. I the ring. What? The ring and the a laminated purity card. Yeah. I never had a purity ring. You didn't? Oh. No. Maybe, maybe my, my dad never did that. Which is good. You're like, I'm hurt, Dad. Yeah, I'm kind of like, I didn't get any jewelry out of this. <laughs> just going to spend the money on the jewelry? This is bullshit. Yeah. I never got the purity ring. I just was like, and you know what's funny is my dad and my stepmom were like always talking about how much they liked having sex with each other. Yeah, right. right because right. they had like waited six months. Right. <laughs> you You're know, like, they're like, we tough. waited. I'm like, mm-hmm. you also got married really fast. <laughs> <laughs> but they were always highlighting the fact that they had like incredible sex, right. but it's because it was ordained. It like, was ordained yes. by God. Mm-hmm. And so it was this weird thing of like, hey, we don't need to know about you having sex. Mm. Like we're good. Yeah. But Mm-mm. when you make us feel so much shame about it, unless it's exactly the way. Oh, that you're doing it? I My thing is always, I always talk about um, bridal showers in the church. Mm, I, so my husband and I... shit in the world, dude. So raunchy. We got married very young. Dated all through... We were 23. Dated all Aww. through church, high school, all yeah. that stuff. Gold star. <laughs> Gold star. I mean, not really. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were having sex. And then on our break, I had my fun little sex rampage for a hot second. But... Nobody knew about it. <laughs> and so with the bridal shower, it was like the constant, you know, you're the shame always when it comes to sex. Yeah. But then I'll never forget my bridal shower. All these women from the church were there who would n- never talk about sex. It was so forbidden. And then bridal shower, everyone was like, so, so when you're gagging on his raunchy. cock. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and they're just like bringing in like all this lingerie that's just so wild looking. And they're like, maybe you should insert a pole and learn how to give him a good little lap dance. And I'm just like, but what? How can yeah. we go from zero to 100? <laughs> it's so, well, it's so much repressed uh-huh. stuff that you're finally allowed to say. And like the saddest thing is you hear some people talk about like, they were so repressed, so much guilt, and then they get married young and they do it all right and they feel too guilty to even have sex with their spouse. Yeah. Yes. Or I was like really confused because my mom would always, my mom would just always talk about sex, like sex is so beautiful, like with your yeah. partner. And then I remember when I started having sex, it, it didn't have anything to do with being married or not married. And I knew that, like mm. I knew that in my head. And I was like, then why isn't this like beautiful? Why is mm. this not feel great? Like my mom said it would. Like I know it's not contingent upon being married. So like why is the sex with my boyfriend not like not mind-blowingly beautiful and fantastic? Mm. Is there something wrong with me? Is mm. that why this isn't happening the way that I thought it would when I first had sex? Because with the way that they had described it, which isn't unique, I don't think, to Christianity. Yeah. Then when I like lost my virginity and like ha- started having sex, I was just like so disappointed. Yeah, no, there's not a lot of sermons in church where they're like, sex is beautiful and magical. As long as you know you are open and you talk about your kinks and maybe you order some stuff online and does everyone know what lube is? Like, there's none of that. Consent? Maybe consent. Yeah. Maybe, consent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. an ask yeah. if they're into it, if they're crying, stop. Like, just, there's no, nothing like that. And so much of church, like, purity culture is like, don't even talk about it. And then, like, you find out as an adult, you're like, the only way to have good sex is to talk about it a bunch. Yeah, yeah. you have to talk about it a lot. Yeah. A lot, a lot. Oh, no, I have so many friends who, like, they waited and then they ended up, like, once they got married, it was just, they like you were saying, they weren't able to have it for so many months because mm. someone felt just too guilty yeah. in the party. It was just, like, it's too mm. much. Like, mm. this is still, it's still so wrong and we haven't talked about it at all. Yeah. So I just can't get there. Did you guys ever talk about Song of Solomon or Song yeah. of Songs oh in your church? Of course. Yeah. We <laughs> we had, about Song of Solomon. <laughs> we had a whole segment in our church one time. The pastor did like an eight-week series. Ours did too. The church was packed, baby. Yep. There was chairs out the door. <laughs> 
everyone was literally like literally they had stacked chairs in the background where people could grab shuffle in because yeah. there were so <laughs> many the people there literally it was crazy yeah did oh they did God. they just like unpack it and all the sexual in yeah went, like it was like there was always that like excitement too of like he's like the next uh five weeks we're gonna dive into song of solomon <laughs> And talk about what it means to be married. And everyone's like, oh. How about your lover's God. fruit dangling from the vine? <laughs> right, juicy exactly. and ready for the, you know. And you're 12 sitting there like, I don't, <laughs> I don't get this part. <laughs> what about the figs? Yes. I don't understand. <laughs> Oh, or God. even like like my lover is like uh two two like gazelle. There was weird things like gazelles leaping through the fields. And you're like, I don't. Even now, I don't Sex really get it. Sex doesn't feel like that for you? <laughs> it doesn't feel like gazelles leaping <laughs> through the fields? <laughs> Maybe being chased by people that I don't want to have sex with when I'm out in public. Can you imagine that? going on a date and they're like, what are you into? You're like, I don't know exactly. I'm open, but I do need to feel like gazelles running yeah, yeah, through a field. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the only thing I need. Kind of go crazy, get creative with it. But that is the brief. That's the ultimate feeling yes. that needs to, <laughs> I need to walk away with. So. Which then, yeah, it's it's kind of easier to date someone who has the same background. That's what I was getting at. Where my yeah, boy, this boyfriend doesn't, he doesn't really, he doesn't really get it. I've never dated somebody who grew up Christian. Oh, really? I wish. Oh, my God. Really? Now oh my God, just, ooh, I, just, I just found a new <laughs> thing I need, I think. I've I've definitely wanted that. I definitely made that list. Did everyone make their list? Yeah, of course. Of course. Mine was like course. blonde, you know, <laughs> like very it's superficial. like Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> yeah, there you have to make. I didn't realize that was a Christian thing. I thought my dad made that up to like <laughs> make a list of what your perfect partner would be and be really specific. <laughs> Because if you don't, God will leave it out, uh, which he does, by the way. But I, I've i never dated anybody who grew up Christian. And maybe that's, you know, you're like attracted to people who have the thing that you want. Mm -hmm. You're running from it. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like always so jealous of my partners usually because they're yeah. like unencumbered by any sort of religious trauma. Right. So it's and it's very hard to explain to somebody like why you have to feel safe with them when they have never had that. And they're just like, and it took me, it took me like a couple partners to also get over the fact that like they had been with a lot of people mm -hmm. and I hadn't been with a lot of people and growing up, did they ever tell you this in church? Did they ever say that if you have sex with someone before you're married, you are cheating on your future partner. Oh, for sure. And Probably if either. you date somebody who slept with someone before you. It's like you're sleeping with all of them. There's like you're sleeping with all of them. And it's like they already cheated on you and you can't trust them. <laughs> if they have if they have sex with you, they're gonna cheat on you because they can't next control level. themselves. Yes. Yeah. That's next level. I don't maybe I tuned that part out. Oh, it's so brutal. So it's even so that's brutal. in there a little bit still of like once I have sex with someone for like a few weeks, I have to just know that I have to work through that like fire alarm going off in my head of like, you can't trust this person. Uh -huh. They fucked you. They fucked you already. And like, they wouldn't have done that if they respected you. Just it's so deep in there. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely oh, yeah. very judgy. I'm not really judgy about like, you know, a friend or whatever. I'm like, girl, get it. Whatever. Not but at all. Very judgy of a male partner who is like, I, I'm like, so you're a whore. and You don't <laughs> love me. Like noted you know that's kind of the way that i feel and it makes me kind of pissed like even sometimes yeah. i still talk about it with my boyfriend i'm just like yeah i mean i just don't think it was very like healthy for you like emotionally <laughs> to just kind of like run through a train of like 45 women over the course of six months yeah I and just i don't think, think it was i'm just i'm just for your health like yeah. i just think that was good for you just for you I as your like current you partner yeah who can't you can't get tested for <laughs> hbv like i so fully get that and i think I really do think it's coming from a place of jealousy in my case. And it took me a long time and a lot of therapy to figure that out is just because I feel the same way about my friends. But I think my female friends being like sexually adventurous, that's more like, oh, if they can do it, maybe I can do it. Right. And like, thank God. And like, yeah. absolutely. Like you overcame the like social judgment around like women having too much sex. But when it's just like straight men having a lot of sex, you're like. Like, you overcame nothing <laughs> you just get to have fun well it's always like that in the church too it's not yes. like well i guess it depends on the church because actually i feel like the guys did get a lot of shit in my i feel like it was sexual. it was porn yeah. 
Porn for the yes. men. Yeah, yeah. That was the big one. And then that really fucked me up too. Was like, the, yeah. you know, if a guy watches porn, it means that y- it's because you're not enough uh-huh. and you're not providing enough in the bedroom. And, you know, I remember when then we got, my husband and I got married and lo- like opening his laptop and going on the history, like the snoop that I am. And I was like, all of a sudden yeah. I saw porn and I'm opening it up. And then he walks into the house that night and I was just like, why did you tell me I wasn't enough for you? We've been having sex oh. constantly. And then it's just like, well, this, this is so not the same thing. Yeah. Like, this is not, what can I say? He's like, I need. S- sometimes <laughs> I need massive fake tits. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, we need a little bit of that in the, in, the, in the world. Yeah, no, I, but it's, you take it all so personally. Yeah. Which is so then the jealousy piece where it's just, and I feel like oh, so much of the jealousy is the the redirecting of it's about me because right. I'm not enough. Right. And yeah. I'm not Which is enough. definitely not Christian specific because no, yes, no, 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 that no, no. is a, that is a constant thing of like, of course. Well, and if, yeah, if he's looking at this type of porn and that's not the way that you look I'm like, mm, what does that say about yeah. like how attracted he is to you? Mm-hmm. Do you guys remember? I think I was just thinking about this. I remember reading some book. It was like, what, what, of course, like it, these were all the, the teen titles, like, what girls need to know about like what men think. It was like that kind of oh. like Christian, you know, like Zondervan publishing thing, you I know, like that re- kind of, there was a book like that. I do remember that. And I remember, because some of these Christian like sex books got very like descriptive about things. Like I remember it was like, <laughs> when you wear a top with your belly button showing, oh. what he pictures is then like pulling off your shirt <laughs> and like seeing your exposed You're breasts. like reading it and you're like, oh my God, and I know. Oh <laughs> And I remember reading it and being like, really? Like, that's what men think. And then I was like, really? <laughs> like, you all of know? a sudden, your shirt is always, you always have a crop on. You're just like, what can I say? But that was something that I that I told, like, my current boyfriend about. And he was, like, so confused about that concept of, like, no, if you're a Christian, you're supposed to, like, see a woman and then not undress her with your eyes because that is wrong. You're right. supposed to actively stop yourself from imagining someone and naked like, or doing it. Oh, like you're that. so cute. <laughs> You think that's oh, you think I can just not do Pat that? On the head? That's yeah, adorable. Right. That's great. <laughs> Does Evan ever talk about that? About like because that the male stuff was so crazy specific about like you cannot even think about having sex with another woman. Yeah, I mean he talks about it a little bit. I think his biggest thing coming from that is that he is which isn't this isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but his his direction from that is that he's so hyper aware of doing the wrong thing Mm. that for a long time when we first started to have sex, he just was and I'm not talking about consent. Mm -hmm. He was like, if it's not that gazelle leaping through the um, the fields, I'm not doing it right. Oh, so it was very like, you know. We couldn't I just have casual. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> um, I would, are you serious? I've literally never met a straight man who was like, "This wasn't good enough. That, I didn't bring it hard enough." The this hardest wasn't thing magical. about my boyfriend is that his dick is so big. <laughs> no, you know, know he's so no, nice. No, I know, no, I know what you're saying. It was, the, it was a great for him. No, it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome because I felt so loved. Yeah. But it would struggle because then he would struggle, like would staying hard. And he didn't feel yeah. like I was like, oh, enough, right. like so there. And I'm like, sometimes I'm quiet. Sometimes yeah. I'm chilling. And then also the ability to have quick casual sex. Right. And I was like, you know, when you're in bed and you wake up at two in the morning and you back up and you have a quick session, it's so fun. Not possible. It has mm. to be this whole foreplay ordeal because yeah. that's what he was like. It had to be like, it. turn the house lights on. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is just, this isn't practical in like a long term sexual relationship because what started to happen then after a while, when life gets busy, we stop having sex mm. because right, right, you right. can't have that quick thing because you both yeah. have, for him, it's like you have to be in this specific the rose zone petals. the entire time. It's very sweet. It's so sweet. Yeah, it's very yeah. sweet. But then in like practicality long term, right. that was then the tough thing where I was just like, I'm good. If I don't, I so appreciate, like, the consent is necessary, but, like, if I want to have sex, it doesn't have to be bells and whistles, and it's not personal if I'm not screaming (laughs) and, like, you know, calling your name the entire time. Do you think that came from Christianity or, like, something to do with his personality? And if Christianity, what in Christianity? Um, I think it's it's part of his personality. 
Um, but then I think a lot of it with Christianity was specifically the way he was raised was it, it was like sex is very, very sacred. Mm -hmm. And so it needs to be treated as such. And like, you're the man. So you need to make sure that you provide this, this and that, which is a great thing his parents taught him is that like, you need to take care of a partner. But it's a lot of pressure. That is a lot of pressure. Yeah. That's a lot. In all the ways, it's a lot of pressure. And totally about, again, about you. Right. Right. And then it would yeah. be and then it would be this weird thing of like, it's about you. Like it's it, he's saying it's about me sexually and my pleasure. But I'd be like, I'm having a lot of pleasure, but it's I'm not giving the reaction. You so this want. is really about so you. So ultimately, yeah. it's about you. Right. Well, that's OK. Yeah. But we're going to talk about it. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. not actually always just about me. Yeah. Yeah. So did you guys love VBS growing up? Yeah. I was so obsessed with it. VBS. Yeah. Wow. I didn't love it because I was an introvert, but. Oh, OK. Uh. We're talking about Vacation Bible yeah. School. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. They do toy giveaways ever at your, ever at your guys's? Oh, I don't remember. So they used to I do this at anything. mine. This was like the, <laughs> the lottery for children. So what they would do oh is, God. you know how they would separate you by ages? Like the sixes, oh, yeah. the sevens, the eights, nines, tens, whatever, how old you were. Or at least that's what we did at my church. They would then have a bag of everyone's name from each group. And then toys for that age group. And every day at the end of VBS, they would pull the name this. from the back. Did you do yes, that too? Yes, we did do this. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. We didn't get any toys. And it was like the highlight of my summer. Like, we waited, like, maybe they'll pull my name and I'll get that, like, puppy mom and her <laughs> little puppy dogs, like, in the basket. <laughs> and it was just, like, the best thing ever. Anyway, oh that's what I remember from it. What are some of your fond memories of Christianity? Now we've talked about how much it sucks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I have any fond ones. Church camp? Church camp was... I did like... I think like Christian youth theater. Does uh, that count? Like CYT mm. camp was fun. That's, that's fun. Yes. Yeah. I remember we had... I, d I went away to CYT camp one year and we had like a purity day. We're like 12. Yeah. 11 or 12. Yeah. And our camp counselors were like probably like 19, yeah. <laughs> like they're children also. Right. And I remember we sat in a circle and one of our male counselors like almost was like crying, telling us that he had almost had sex. <laughs> You're like, we're 12. <laughs> yeah. Just like, he's like, we got really close and you know, it's not okay. <laughs> like, and we were like, oh my God, I'm never, I'm never going to touch anybody because this like surfer Christian dude is so fucked up from like, I guess some heavy petting. I don't really know what happened. Like, I think he got specific. He was like, you know, we didn't have sex, but we were like naked. And you're like, oh my God, Jason, stop. <laughs> he probably should have been fired. Uh, but they were, I'm sure that we were supposed to have like a purity day. <laughs> I'm like, I think we overshared. <laughs> you end up getting a one one sided counseling session. Yes. With the surfer who slipped up. Well, and then there was the born again um, too, because I remember the youth yes. pastor being like, you know, like born again virgin. That's a whole thing you can yeah. do, you know, all of that. <laughs> oh yeah. Where I, I do like the like I if your whole family is something, I I did like that. Like Yeah. And community. I have my extended family is like there's some cool Christians yeah. who are very open minded and like I'm very jealous of like my cousins and my aunt and mm -hmm. uncle have like a very tight knit church family. Mm -hmm. But they are very like balanced and open minded and stuff too. Um and I, I wish I could be in that because it is such a like, it feels so like nice and wholesome mm -hmm. and supportive when it's done right. But that was just not my experience. And I yeah. just couldn't, couldn't get into it. But when you're a kid and you have like holidays and stuff, like very fun. Yeah. Sure. Where are you good from parts. originally? I'm from California. Oh, where? Yeah. I grew up uh, in Modesto. And I'm from Fresno. You're from Fresno. Yeah. Oh, shut up. Neighbors. Hell yeah. No, I was in Modesto until I was like 10, like stocked in Modesto. And then uh, I was in Temecula. Oh, okay. After that. Yep. Yeah. Love Temecula. How about you? Orange County. Okay. So close here we go. By. Oh, great. Yeah. Everyone's Cali. Love yes, it. Yes. All the California, California folks. Christian kids. You know what's funny, though, about the people who are like the progressive Christians now? Like, my sister and I talk about this because my sister is like, she's like, I am not a Christian. And she goes, Yeah, I'm still checking Christians. Like, mm, you're not a real Christian. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Brads, one more quick pause. If you've listened to this podcast at all, you probably know that. I'm a fan of the balls. What can I say? I love the balls. But you know, it's not always the cleanest. 
down there. I mean, it's not entirely their fault. We get it. The groin area is one of the most odor prone areas of the body and a breeding ground for bacteria. Yuck. Uh, the solution to that, though, ballsy. Ballsy makes men's products for their parts that keep them fresh, comfortable, and confident. The standard product your guy might have around the house is a trimmer, but Ballsy goes so far beyond that. Ballsy has every product your guy needs to keep things so tidy down there, like a wash, a spray, and so much more. All of Ballsy's products are made only with the best ingredients that won't cause irritation or discomfort, like essential oils and plant extracts. So you're never going to find any parabens, sulfates, or synthetic dyes in any any of their products. If you aren't sure what products you need or where to start, there are two ways to go. If you want to get a customized system tailored to your personal situation, I would suggest taking their quiz, which will recommend exactly what he needs. Or if you want to jump right in and try all three of Ballsy's best-selling products, then the Sack Pack is for you. The Sack Pack has the ultimate trifecta of products that every guy could use in his life. There's a reason Ballsy has over 200,000 happy customers Ballsy's products really work, and as someone who is around Ballsy's products in the vicinity of it, I will tell you, I'm a fan. They're amazing. So keep the funk off your man's junk. And right now, if you go to ballwash.com slash chattybroads20, and if you put in promo code chattybroads20, you're going to receive 20% off. That's 20% off when you go to ballwash.com slash chattybroads20 and put in code chattybroads20. So if I had to grade myself in the self-care department, I would absolutely say A for effort, but a C minus for execution. (laughs) Obviously, taking care of yourself is super important and allows you to be the best you that you can be, of course. So trust me, I see the importance in it. But every time I go to do something for myself, I start mind grinding about something that needs to get done or something that my little one said the other day or running through all the text messages I forgot to respond to in the last week, all the usual things. But recently, I've made it a priority to make time to focus on myself. And thanks to Dipsy, it's going really well. And it's going sexily well. Well, that's because Dipsy is literally made for those moments when you just need to turn the whole world off while also turning yourself on, baby. Dipsy's an app that's full of sexy audio and written stories that will get you focusing on yourself in record time, if you know what I mean. Just pick your story, close your eyes, and get lost in the plot, which is pretty easy to do because they are so immersive. The production quality is very high. And Dipsy has so many options to choose from so you can pick something you know you will enjoy. And guys, it's never corny. Like the audio erotica is top notch. It truly is. Oh, how I love Dipsy. And I love using Dipsy on those nights that I just can't go to sleep as well. If you're not feeling a sexy story one night, be sure to check out all of the other amazing tools Dipsy has to offer, like their wellness sessions, which are designed to help you wind down, and their sleep sessions to help you drift off. For listeners of the show, Dipsy's offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash chatty. So that's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash chatty. Dipsy stories, like a dip in the sea, stories.com slash chatty. Do you really know the Lord then? Like, that's kind so of that, funny. Kind of, she talks about being like, judging the 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 new wave of christians being like well yeah. i don't know if that's like, biblically supported like, but have you read what you're supporting have you read the bible <laughs> right and mm. but being judgmental of just like mm, you know i don't know if you can really claim that and you're not a good enough christian even now like not yeah. being a christian anymore is such an interesting thing i know i'm like if you want to say you're a christian be a christian i don't care if you want to say you're a comedian you're gonna have to earn that yeah. but <laughs> You're like, that's my new community. Yes. So you're going to have to. That's what I feel precious about. But if you're like, I'm a Christian. But yeah, I, that's if it. Although I will say if people are like. Very like sexually open and like don't have any guilt or shame. And they're like, and I'm a Christian. I feel that way, too, where I'm like. <laughs> You don't get to just be yeah. <laughs> the good part of Christian. You're, not, you're supposed to be repressed. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, come on, this is not what it. You could have been ever. I could have been everything. Uh, I can. You're telling me I can believe in Jesus and also like have sex. That's yeah. not. That's not what it is. <laughs> no, it's so funny. I'm like my two two of my best girlfriends are. They consider themselves to be Christians, and they're both so sexually open, and they just live their life. 
And so they're always like, we don't understand why you're so like, why you have such a problem with Christianity. And I'm like, that's because you didn't have the same experience as me. And that's yeah. fine. I'm happy for you. But also, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough about Christianity. What yeah. about life now? Now that everything's perfect. Now, now everything's yeah. great. Now yeah. everything's great. I made it. <laughs> yeah. life, I made it to heaven. It's yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. What about life now? Well, okay. So you said your new special is about like mental health and mm-hmm. therapy, all stuff that no one really talks about in this day and age, you know? I mean, I'm, so. they're talking about it. <laughs> I mean, especially like the next, I think like Gen Z now is very sad yeah. and like very self aware yeah. in yeah. the best possible way. And millennials were already kind of there. Like we're oh, sad yeah. and yeah. self aware and we're like looking at ourselves. All the time. No, that was like stupid sarcasm of just like, oh, that's all. I'm that's, so sorry. I totally okay. missed it. That's I was okay. like, I mean, <laughs> I really heard talking about it. That was it's humiliating no, that's okay. that I did not pick up on that. Um, I met you 40 minutes ago. <laughs> that's, I, okay. that's okay. That's okay. That's <laughs> okay. Okay. But like to that note, where, how long have you been doing therapy now? I mean, I went for like a year in high school because I was, uh, deeply deeply depressed like Mm. really bad um and was it after your mom died no oh i went to therapy after my mom died too i was eight when my mom died so Mm. i got sent to like the school therapist uh uh, hospice group therapy where they would put children whose parents had already died of cancer with the kids whose parents were currently dying Mm. of cancer so we could all hang out and draw pictures and make candles together and process that simultaneously don't know whose idea that was oh God. and then i so you also don't recommend that no don't recommend that and then i had like a therapist someone found i don't know that i saw on my own for however long but that can't have been longer than a year um it was less than a year for sure because my dad got remarried like nine months later uh and then i didn't go to therapy until high school and when I first brought it up in high school, because a friend of mine was like, I think you have some, like, I think you have <laughs> depression. And I tr- I wanted to go to therapy. And I remember I told my dad, and he was like, all right. And then he, like, didn't want to send me because it made him feel like a failure as a father. Mm-hmm. And so that was, like, a huge, it was, like, a fight to go. And then I finally went for, like, a year. And that's, weirdly enough, I'd, like, never really heard of anxiety either. So... I remember that was something she said where she was like, you're so terrified all the time that you get really depressed as a result of that. She's Mm -hmm. like, you're just going like up and down. Um, And then I stopped for years until I was probably like 23 and I was on the road a lot and I had gone through a couple of romantic relationships and like my mental health had just kind of been like deteriorating. It just Mm -hmm. been getting like worse and worse over, you know, the last like four years or something and i got on like talk space which was fine you can use our code guys oh, it was great it was great it was great it was really, it was really good perfect. Good, best experience. absolutely perfect I, here's the thing i didn't try i didn't like think i should try other ones like the whole point of like talk space is so great is you can just go to a different therapist pr- really quickly right. right and it's why so many people don't stay with therapy because they think if like the first person yeah, they see like, doesn't, doesn't fit. fit yeah and like the woman i saw was very nice it just didn't we just didn't but totally you need to connect. find you have to find your right person i know but i was too scared to be yeah. like to I'm reject go, your therapist. i was too scared to swipe left <laughs> yeah. so i just deleted my entire account yeah i did i've done the same thing <laughs> yeah but i think i told her like, oh, I, I don't know if this is the right fit. Oh, and also I wanted to see someone in person. Mm-hmm. So then I was trying to do that. Um, so I saw her. I saw her for a while, though. I saw her for a while. And then I stopped again. And then I started going. Uh, my ex found me, my old therapist. And then that therapist found me a psychiatrist. And then I stopped seeing my therapist, started relying on a psychiatrist. And then my psychiatrist found my current therapist. So I've been kind of like what a in team. and out. What a team. I the know. Avengers. <laughs> that's the team that's actually inside while we're recording. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> They're, that's my psychiatrist, entourage. Psychiatrist, therapist. Yes. Yeah, so I've been like in and out. But uh, yeah, I, I think I went for a little while virtually when I was 23. And then it was like a couple years and then I went for like a year and then I took some time off and then 
finally went back like a year later because I was like, I keep getting the same feedback from people. <laughs> and maybe I should take a look at some of this stuff. <laughs> maybe I should work on these trust issues with a trained professional. Uh -huh. uh, and I mean, the last like two years have been hugely, uh, hugely focused on therapy and like the right meds and all that stuff. What do you focus on most in therapy? Is that too personal to ask? No, I don't think so. What I focus on most in therapy is probably, honestly, probably just fear. Like I mm -hmm. just have a lot of fear. I have a lot of fear that I'm not good enough. I have a lot of fear that I've fucked up already. I have a lot of fear I'm currently fucking up. I have a lot of fear that I'm wrong and I'm not like doing things correctly or like treating people right or that I'm not giving people the benefit of the doubt or like, and and it it's almost like, I think another thing to tie it into the Christianity stuff is like it makes it hard to trust yourself because mm -hmm. you don't grow up being told to trust your inner monologue. You're, <laughs> no, you're that's told, wrong. You're told your inner monologue is God. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also like you is really selfish and yes. really flawed. And like mm -hmm. that if you are going off of your own desires or like things that are going to make you happy. I was just talking to my sister yes. about this last night because my, I was uh, at my therapist yesterday and I do something called brain spotting. Have you heard of that? No, what's that? It's like a sort of a sister of EMDR. It's very- I've done that. Brain spotting, it's very weird and it seems like you're not doing anything at first and you're like, is this um, what's happening? But it's, I've actually been seeing like great results from it. And wow. my therapist in particular is like, I swear by it. it. Gets to like the root of problems and like beliefs about, she's like, it's really good about working out beliefs about yourself. Yeah. And then the one I scored highest on was I'm not good enough. And it's that, mm -hmm. that same thing. Like I'm not working hard enough in my career. I can never finish projects. Mm -hmm. Like I can't, which by the way, just sabotages yourself, obviously. Cause then you just have those limiting beliefs as a self-fulfilling prophecy. But like, yeah, I'm not a good enough friend, not a good enough. I can, can't keep my house clean enough. Like, you know, on and on and on with all that stuff. But I, I think my sister and I were talking about how you're taught that like you and wanting to just like be happy is like one of the worst directions mm -hmm. that you could follow. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to go with the hard thing. Mm -hmm. the sacrifice. Like, you're supposed to repress everything. The sacrifice. Exactly. So I think a lot of that is pretty deep rooted. And uh, I, you know, I have trust issues for a lot of reasons, but I also will make excuses for people for a long time mm -hmm. as well. So I never quite know. Yeah. You know what my gut is telling me in terms of like relationships, whether that be romantic or otherwise. Um, so I think it's a lot of that I have a lot of fear of loss, like, cause yeah, my mom died and like all this stuff and I don't have a great relationship with my dad. And it's just like, it's crazy how much time you have to spend talking about the same stuff. And I'm, I am frustrated lately that I can identify why I struggle with certain things, but identifying it doesn't fix it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're like, well, once I figure out what it is. Yeah, then it'll then stop. Then it'll be right? fine. <laughs> and it'll stop. And it doesn't. And then you just know what's happening while it's physically tearing through your body. The, yeah. like, fear and anxiety mm -hmm. and... That's that's where I feel like sometimes like I was getting frustrated. I felt like talk therapy was at a certain point hitting a wall for me where I was like, like you said, I can identify it. But then I remember being so frustrated one day being like, yeah, so the reason that this event gets to me is because at the root of this event, it's that someone can use your vulnerability against you and really hurt you. Yep. And my therapist was like, yeah. And then I was like, now and what? <laughs> where's my worksheet? <laughs> So that's just the space I got to exist in is that if yeah. I open up to people and vulnerable to them, they can stab me with it. Yeah. OK, that's like a scary place to exist in. Mm -hmm. So. But it's true, though. That's the now? shitty thing. I know. I know. <laughs> like that's being an adult is just realizing like I'm so scared of all these things and everyone's like, mm hmm. <laughs> Hundred percent valid, like, you're like, valid, yeah, so valid could happen, for sure. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah. I, like the best advice anyone can give you is just like you can't live thinking about it all the time you're like, but it could happen there like, it could yeah but what are you gonna do you're gonna be scared of it until it does and maybe it won't <laughs> it's so true what i will say what's been happening with brain spotting which is really interesting is almost that i can like uh feel sometimes like that concept but then i can sort of like recognize that it's here it's not actually and I'm, I'm moving my hands around for the audio <laughs> listeners it's uh it is not inherent to my being. So I can have that thought and that fear, but it's not necessarily a part of me. Mm -hmm. It's actually yeah. just like existing in in the 
blip of my consciousness and it's not yeah. actually like here in my mind existing. I don't know if that makes sense, but totally it's like, makes sense. Like I can yeah. kind of separate myself from the thought of it. And that's been helping. My friend Delaney, her therapist told her to like schedule anxiety. Oh, I've heard like that you can before. panic about it from like three to three thirty. That bothers me. I, don't I like haven't been suggestion. able to do it, but it sounds great. Yeah, I'm like if I could schedule my anxiety in, that would. I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah, if you're just like, I'll deal with that later. Like it's compartmentalizing, which yeah. I am not good at. Like I am just bleeding into everything uh -huh. else. Yeah. Like, yeah, every feeling I have is just ink. But on toilet paper. I guess yeah. I do actually, now that I think about it, I guess I do get that concept. Like if you set a time and you were like nine o'clock in the morning, first thing I'm gonna do is gonna write down everything yes. bad that could happen to me throughout the day for a half an hour. Yeah. It's gonna, gonna get bored of it at some point. You're gonna be like, mm, okay, this is stupid. Yeah. And that's what you're talking about is just taking <laughs> just it like, outside yourself. Yeah. So just you're like, like now that's in here. Yeah. <laughs> Sinkholes number one. Yes. And <laughs> my massive fear. <laughs> um, yeah. I feel like the, like the detachment thing is, is the piece that's I helped get, me. I guess that's mindfulness. Yeah. Right? I guess. Mm -hmm. But like just the detachment is like, I'm like, yeah, all these things I'm now aware could happen every moment of every day. Yeah. And I could live, I can live in like massive anxiety and fear of it. But one of my fears is dying. So I might as well take advantage of enjoying right now yeah. before that happens. So that's really been the only thing that's been like actively helping me be like in the moment and not worried about that. Cause I'm like, I know my ultimate fear will happen at one point. Yes. So I just have to exist and have a good time and enjoy life now. Yeah. What about psychedelics? Do you do psychedelics? I was going to say, I did mushrooms for, again, in the special, I'll talk about it. I did mushrooms like for the first time, I guess like a year and a half ago. And I haven't done it a ton because it's like work. <laughs> when you do it, you're like, this is like five hours of intense <laughs> emotional work. Not fun. <laughs> but it was, I was so scared to do them. And I did it with a friend of mine who's like very experienced. And it's like the only thing that is, I feel, helped wow. my brain rearrange and like totally made a difference like for however long, a couple weeks after or something. Wow. And just knowing that I could, I've never been totally present except for then probably. And knowing that I could be there again, like having like that memory just helped me. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's so strange. Like when you fall in love for the first time and then going forward, it's really hard, but you know you've fallen in love before right. so mm -hmm. you can do it again mm -hmm. is like kind of how it how it felt to me. What about you? Yeah. Uh, some horrifying traumatizing experiences. Oh, like those. No. I don't do them regularly at all. I did such a low dose and it was great. But you did, did you do like a high dose? Uh, I was just, oh, I've talked about this on the podcast before and on, and, uh, and on the gram. Sorry for the repeat story, you guys, but Taylor hasn't heard it. So <laughs> they haven't, you guys. <laughs> like, um, when I it was just all bad scenario. I was in San Francisco. I don't like San Francisco. I had just had a horrible breakup the week oh. before. I was at a friend's house with uh, their boyfriend and roommates who I didn't know. It was like, oh. guys, let's do mushrooms. No, get this, get this, get this. Get this <laughs> People get this. you didn't know. No, 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 get this. No, get this. <laughs> it gets so oh, but it gets worse. It gets worse. It gets worse. Oh, no. So we make the mushroom tea. Oh, and tea's intense. I drink it, and then no, everyone else decides they're not going to. <gasps> everyone else dips out. What? <laughs> that is so mean. This is the worst story I've that ever is heard. So mean. It was. I mean, look. It, it, when I think back on it, I have grace for everyone and compassion. No, 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 no. But no, I was like, okay, so my you friend, should not have grace my, for okay, them. Yeah. They're terrible but here's people, the thing. and you should not be friends with any <laughs> but of them here's anymore. The thing. My friend's boyfriend. It was a piece of shit. I, the roommates didn't know me and I didn't know them. And my friend had never done psychedelics before. So it was kind of like, oh, no, I just don't really feel well. I don't really want, you know, like not knowing the weight of that kind yeah. of like sure. decision and how that might impact my experience. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I spent like the first hour in the bathroom with my face on the <gasps> toilet seat because it was the only thing that was cold that felt good. No. Calling my mom. Oh. Which I had a good cover because I had just had this horrible breakup. So I was just like, mom, right. I'm not in a good place. I need you to pray for me. And oh. she's like, I got you, you know. How and old were you? I felt a lot. I was 19, 18, okay. 18, 19. So <sighs> yikes. that made me feel better. But then I just like laid on the top of a bunk bed with a towel over my face, listening oh. to like the shitty EDM from the apartment below, which was the only thing like soothing me in that moment. <laughs> and it was just a lot. Yeah. And then... 
I actually came out of that experience at the end of it. Like I remember looking in the mirror. It was like one o'clock in the morning. Everyone else was asleep. And I was looking at myself in the like dorm bathroom mirror, just being like, you are invincible. Like you've <laughs> overcome everything. Like I was so, I've always been scared of demons. I was so scared of demons, especially in my high school years. And I just remember being like, I could like fight a demon right now. And <laughs> I wouldn't amazing. even be like scared of it. And it was so cool. So then- I decided like two months later, still really grieving the loss of this relationship and pretty much alone. I was at my dorm and then I decided I had I had bought mushrooms for someone. I was like, cool. So now I'm going to do mushrooms again now by myself and I'm going to curate this experience for myself. Well, like 15 minutes in, I felt myself coming up and started just panicking so then I was panicking then I was trying to take Benadryl to try to make myself go to sleep but then so then I was going in and out of sleep and I was like like Um, oh it was so horrible so I was traumatized after that and uh, even now to this day, I have an irrational fear that I'm going to be drugged <gasps> with psychedelics from even just like orange juice from the store. It terrifies me. But I have done psychedelics since. Like I have done mushrooms like a few times since in smaller doses. And there's still a lot of anxiety with it. Yeah. But um, I will say like one, like I, I did a bit last year and what I felt for like two weeks was this insane um, desire to like work out like. Oh. All the like, I wanted to like be outside and like be moving my body a lot, mm. which was interesting. Yeah, but I had like never experienced like just the pure desire to move my body outside yeah. of like I should work out. So that was an interesting experience. And then my neighbor is a psychedelic tantric guide. Ooh, yes, a fun name and to have. Uh, <laughs> and they Drop were just telling me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were just telling me about doing bufo. Have you heard of this? No. And I keep telling Jess that she needs to do it. Because she's afraid I of death. I haven't yeah. done much. I'm. I'm I think too, it would help your fear of death. I. I need to. I need to do it. Yeah. I need to do it because I'm so scared of doing anything. I, I just. Start, I, I smoked weed. I started smoking weed for the first time, ever, like a couple months ago. And is it good? It's so much. It's so great. I started. I started doing weed when I was like, twenty two. And it was really great for like four years. And then it, I Turns had a bad out. experience. I did too much and I had a bad experience. And now it like doesn't, it makes me too scared because I think my yeah. body just remembers well, that. Well, I had had, I had smoked weed once and I had a horrible experience. Oh, yeah. And then I never did it again for years and years and years. And then Becca was just like, you just had, you had way too much. Like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. You can make sure you don't do it. And then I started having a little bit here and there. And I was like, oh, wow, I sleep so well. And I function like, you know, at the end of the day so nicely, like I can just be fully present and I can relax. Like I I know I need to do it. Meanwhile, I've been smoking weed every other day for a decade and I still get terrified out of my mind about 30% of the time. And yet I continue to do it. (laughs) We were just talking about it on the podcast. I was like, why do I keep doing this to myself? Uh, Anyway, but so this Bufo, you might like this too. Okay. It's this toad venom that you smoke. Oh my God. What? (laughs) Toad (laughs) venom? it's this toad venom. That you smoke. When she said this to me, I was like, "Mm, okay. All right, go ahead. Organic. (laughs) So you can drive up to this apparently like multi-million dollar home up in Malibu where this person facilitates it. You can go other places too. It's $333. Oh my God. Get over yourself, (laughs) Toad Venom. You don't want to go with a partner though. Okay. Then you're paying $666. So you got to be careful. It's per person. <laughs> it's per Not person. Not amount. Oh, per no. person. So, so, but you, okay, so you smoke this toad venom. And then apparently, this is how my friend described it. You, before you can even exhale, you're like gone. Like, have you ever done, have you ever done salvia? No. It's kind of like, well, okay. So yeah, you, before you can even exhale, you're like there. It's like DMT or something like that where you're like, Boom, oh out God. of body. It's not like shrooms where you're kind of like in, yeah. out of reality. And she said that the way she described it was um, her soul going back to source, recharging <gasps> and then coming back to her body. That sounds amazing. Right? Uh-huh. And she said she so didn't even good. remember it. She just kind of like woke up and had this knowing. It only lasts like 20 minutes, but sometimes people don't remember it at all. She just had this knowing. I'd want of my like, money back if I didn't remember. Yeah, I'd be like, well, <laughs> yeah. But she said it felt like deja vu and this like knowing that uh, that uh, 
everyone is like connected and yeah. knowing that like the soul is disconnected from the body and that her soul was like, you know, forever intertwined with like this source. And so were all of us. Like she's cool. only <laughs> I mean that sounds great I mean mushrooms will do that though yeah but there's also the scary aspects of it potentially yeah. too but the toad venom is I know scary. I was there's like no the toad venom aspect. scares me well, like passing out and like waking up but it's so, <laughs> but it's, scares me. But it's so quick see that's that does, is what scares me about like mushrooms and acid like my boyfriend loves psychedelics, but I'm like, dude, when you're doing acid, you're signing up for like 12 hours sometimes. Right. It's a long, it's a it's long forever. time. It's Isn't a long DMT time. Isn't DMT like 20 minutes too, but it so. feels really long? Yeah, like forever. Like you I live in eternity. Yeah, the that DMT. That I don't want to do. No. No. <laughs> no. You feel like you're in like space reconnecting <laughs> no with some sort of like blue figure, but it feels like 100 years. Don't want to like do 15 it. 15 minutes. No, no. I want whatever I do to feel very quick. I want it to be done. Right. Granted, though, I think the nice thing about DMT is that you are like sucked up, you know, like you're, you're beamed up. You don't like that aspect of it? I just, the idea of I it? just heard scary stuff about it, I think. Really? I think so, yeah. Uh, I just, you, it sounds like, I don't know. I don't want to feel like out of control necessarily. See, that's how I feel with, with mushrooms because I feel like I can sort of come back into yes. lucidity. And yeah. so that kind of scares me because then when I have the periods of lucidity during the trip, I can recognize that I was just tripping and being crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, that's how I feel about it. So interesting. Everyone's so different and everybody's experiences are so different. Your face is like, none of this is selling me on it. It just, you know. Where does your heart pull you? We're a nice, like, this is a perfect. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like, <laughs> no, I don't want any part of it. Kind of ooh, open to it. Very open. Very open. Go, very on on her way to get toad venom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's literally like, it's her birthday this I'm weekend. Counting and I'm my... very scared that I'm going to show up and she's going to be like, I brought you here to enforce I this on never. you. I would never. Then I'm be scared like, of the karma fuck. coming back around and someone, I would never. I just, you know, I know, here's my thing. I know it would be good for me. Mm -hmm. I do know it would be good for me. I'm just so scared of it. And I'm like you, I'm such a fearful person. Mm. Yeah. Everything scares me. Like everything of every day when I, this mm. is so embarrassing. <laughs> a couple days ago, no. I got stung by a bee for the first time. Is Never been stung. Yet? Get stung by the bee. And I convince myself immediately that I'm going into anaphylactic <gasps> shock, which I'm not. No. Yeah. And it's just the way I'm wired. All of a sudden I'm laying on the ground. I'm like hyperventilating. I'm like, I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Give me about five minutes. Panic attack is over and I'm okay. Well, that's not that embarrassing. I literally buy Tropicana and I'm convinced someone put acid in it at the factory. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's really not embarrassing. Yours is much more within the realm of <laughs> reality. you've been stung before. And, and then your heart stung. start beating faster than you think you're going into well, anaphylactic shock. But that's what happens to like all the time for me is I always get scared of something and the heart starts beating so fast. And then I'm like, death that's what's I'm dying happening. like every time I'm like oh I'm having a heart attack like I always right. think and but I just get myself there whenever I'm driving this I mean whenever I'm driving every time I'm stuck underneath a bridge I'm like earthquake, earthquake. Yeah. yeah of Here course comes a big one and you're just like, I gotta get past the bridge just <laughs> live <laughs> just gotta get to the I'm other just gotta side. get to the other side and it's traffic you're just like come on I'm just gonna like and you're like pathing out or like making the pathways of, like if I get around here if it starts shaking then I can zip I mean it's just so the idea of being fully out of control, I know would be good. Right. But I it's mean, so scary look, to me. having children is something I've always wanted, but I don't know if I can handle mm -hmm. it because of the fear. Because, like, you're talking about not when you feel out of control. Like, isn't that just all it is? It's mm -hmm. just, I made yes. these things that I love more than anything in the world that I'm so out of control. Yes. I will say, having, and this is just personal, but having a child really helped my fear a lot. Because it was almost like the recognition of, yeah, you can't control it. Wow. So there's a little bit of a letting go where I like so much of my fear, I feel like, is because I hold so tightly 24 seven mm -hmm. and that just aggravates it. So then all of a sudden when there's this little being that a you're force. like, yeah, a force, <laughs> you're like, I can't, I cannot, I can't control what's going to happen. Like I can be a good mother and be there. But I'm, I can't control ultimately what's going to happen, that there's definitely a kind of a letting go. And I've gotten way less anxious since having a kid. Wow. I think maybe yeah. it, I think part of that could be like they disrupt your patterns. Right. And mm -hmm. so like part of I think healing is disrupting. Right. Because you, you can get into the 
patterns and rhythms, I think, especially with anxiety, where you're like, this is the way I'm going to do things. And if I can do all these things this way, then that will be predictable, which means that I will be safer or like Mm -hmm. the illusion of safety. And then that's literally impossible when you have kids. But then again, some people do the opposite and they try to cling even tighter, which does not bode well for raising children Mm -hmm. at all. But yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I feel like if you want if you want children one day, I'm like, I feel like it helps. Yeah, I always have. But again, that my only drawback is just the fear Mm -hmm. associated with it. Are you scared of like of them being on the planet or the giving birth part? No, I'm scared of them being on the planet. I'm scared of like losing them or something happening and it being my fault. And like, I was really scared of childbirth when I was a kid. And then I found out about drugs and I was like, oh, they'll, they numb you? Fine. Mm -hmm. Like, it'll hurt for a while. And also everybody does it. So you're kind of like, like, what was it like for? That was my big thing is it's, I'm like, okay. Every moment got here. of every yeah. day, someone is giving birth. So I need to figure. I can. I can do this. Like we're gonna be fine. We we both did unmedicated. I was gonna ask. Yeah, oh my did. god, was yeah. it like the worst pain of your entire life? Mm, really? No. no. <gasps> really? Uh, it wasn't. I don't think I would say it was the worst pain of my life no. either. To be completely honest, no. the bee sting hurt really bad. <laughs> 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 it was. It was painful. What is the worst pain of your life? Um, I mean, honestly, I think what it is with having a kid, you're like something positive is on the other side. Mm. So I'm pushing through it. Other pain. It's like I remember one time I broke my wrist oh. and then they had to re-break it without Medicaid. Oh they couldn't get it. So then I was like fully I'm like, that probably hurt more than anything. Oh. That was terrible. Yes. So horrifying. It was terrible. But even in general, I'm like, when I have like a horrible migraine and I'm like throwing up and my head hurts so <laughs> yes. bad, I'm like, this is worse, honestly, because I don't know when this is going to end and there's nothing positive coming out of the other side of this except me hopefully feeling better yeah. for like the next day before the next migraine comes, yeah. you know? Or like you hate the dentist. I bet you'd pick giving oh, birth over the dentist. What am, I, <laughs> what am I even saying? My dental work, that hurt the worst by a mile. Um, oh, yeah. I would rather give birth constantly than go to the dentist. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, once a month. Let's pop one out. Because <laughs> there's just something positive. And as a, the thing is, too, it's like, do you get bad cramps? You know what's funny? I I did not have a period for years once I got on um, my birth control, yeah. which is apparently normal Yeah, for this birth control anyway. And my periods were so painful all growing up and it's why i got on birth control Mm -hmm. because i wasn't having sex heaven (laughs) yeah and of course like once i hit the pandemic like while i was in quarantine my period started coming back weirdly interesting so i would get it like occasionally and like a full period not just like spotting and then like in the last year now i get it like every other month or like every two months like I'm on it right now and it's like the worst cramps that I've had. Oh, I'm so sorry. That, like in so long. It's so weird. That's but weird that all of a sudden it came back. It's, it's super It's like weird. I know that it's stressful enough these past few years with the pandemic. I so <laughs> the period's going to come back and hurt. Let me tell you something though. Childbirth will be fine then. Yeah. Because it's similar? It's it's It literally is a cramp. It's like a it, cramp. It's a period cramp. Yeah. That, okay. That, well, <laughs> it's not just a period cramp, but, but it, in, it just like sl- if... It's familiar. It slowly intensifies. Yeah. It's very familiar. Yeah. Okay. And it just like gets, I mean, it does get to the point, of course, where it's like, like flowing through your whole body where you're like, uh, you're in it. But at that point, I will say if you can get comfortable enough wherever you are, like I had my first, my, my first kid in a birth center and the second at home. And like with my second at home, I was like in the dark bathroom, like, you know, on my own, just like doing it. And I, because I was so comfortable, I do think like then you get the, you get the endorphins flowing and all the, all the hormones and chemicals. And then you're just like, talk about a psychedelic trip. You're just like kind of somewhere else. And at that point, like I did think what was interesting is there were times where it was really intense, but I never once thought like, I've got to go get an epidural right now. I was kind of like too far to even like conceptualize that. It was just like, uh, the baby's got to come out. So you had like a doula? I had a midwife. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's um, the difference? Midwife is like medical, like a, okay. like a doctor. Like birthing the baby. But a doula's not? A doula's just emotional support. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And like an advocate. 
So okay. they're very trendy right now, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like right. everyone knows. I thought that was the same thing. I'm so glad yeah. I am. Yeah, no, the doula. I had a doula because I was in a hospital, and the doula was like making sure that like I was taken care All of. Her preferences and I was good. were yeah. what she wanted yeah. for the That's birth. So nice. It was so nice. That's yeah. what my tour manager does on tour. Exactly. <laughs> like, do you need <laughs> an oat milk latte? You're just your tour doula. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take deep breaths. Okay. <laughs> That's how you should introduce her. <laughs> <introduce, laughs> this my this tour is my doula. doula. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, but for real, when all of a sudden it's like if the venue is not doing what they said they were going to do, yeah. it's like, excuse me. <laughs> so the You're doctor the like, hey. the venue. <laughs> like, I have a very successful podcast. This is the venue now. <laughs> this is her list of preferences. You're just like shaking in the corner. Right. They're like, here's her rider. <laughs> <laughs> she needs lots of ice chips. But yeah, yeah midwife's no. got to go through school and all that. Yeah. Gotcha. But so, if okay. you, yeah, if you get the bad cramps. I'll be fine. I know. That's what I was thinking yesterday. Yesterday they were really bad. Today I'm like <laughs> got ahead of it with ibuprofen. Oh, but yesterday I was like, oh my God, like this has not happened in years where it's just like shooting up oh, you. Oh yeah. Really? This is like. No, that's like a contraction. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. yeah that's shoot, the way you describe shooting up you. Yeah. It's yeah. like through your body where yeah. you're like full. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not scared anymore. No, then you're fine. <laughs> I'm, yeah. well, then you got to push it out too. Yeah. There's that part. But oh, the pushing yeah. is relief. That's sounds... pure relief. Well. Really? But what about like the tearing and stuff? That's that was the part that I was the most scared of. <laughs> yeah. But it's just the again the adrenaline's so wild and like you're just ready to push that it's just like I when didn't it have it though. I was the first time I was miserable through the pushing. I was like, give me back the contractions now. Yeah. Um How long does the pushing last? Depends. Mine was three hours. Yeah, three mine was hours? Did my second my son. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I thought pushing was like the final twenty seconds. <laughs> it should be. <gasps> okay. It Here's the, okay, 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 okay. Here's the other thing. Now I'm gonna go on my little rant, but this is the other problem is that like usually like in a hospital or at the birth center I was at, they'll be like, you're at 10 centimeters, start pushing. But like your body might not there's be ready. not really any need to do that. Like I've heard stories of women taking like an, an literally like a nap after they get to 10 centimeters and their body has to like crank up energy. Mm-hmm. So because then you can Get it quick. Well, yeah. So I feel like it's better to wait until you feel your body pushing. Because like with my son, I just was like, don't check me. I don't want to know when I'm at 10 centimeters. Just like no one get near me. And then I like felt his head drop. And like (gasps) I couldn't stop it. Like my body just started pushing. And he was like out in like five seconds. Wow. Which Mm -hmm. was so cool yeah that's so cool but with my daughter they were like 10 centimeters and so i was just like laying yeah. and trying to push for like three hours and i was like not pushing again i mean it's like nothing was happening you know and i should have just like saved my energy so yeah anyway. God, that's birth so is weird it yeah is pregnancy and like tv and movies is like sex Orf. and tv and movies where it's like so much faster than <laughs> it extreme. should be yeah uh-huh. where they're like time to push and then like literally <laughs> yeah. 10 seconds later there's a baby and I'm realizing that's my only frame of reference because <laughs> I've never actually asked, how long are you pushing? Like I knew labor could be like, how long was labor for you guys? 32 like, hours. <gasps> yeah. But, but it's, it, yeah, yeah, it's it's different. It's different stages, right? So right. like yeah. it starts off and it's slow. It starts off feeling like bad. the lightest period cramps. You're just like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And then you have usually when you start, you have like, you know, 10 or 15 minutes in between each little cramp that lasts like 20 seconds. Okay. Yeah. And then when you're in the last, but then I know some people have had like an hour long labor, which sounds great, except that, except that it was like they were walking around the house, then their water broke, and next thing they're like, ah! yeah, like you know, it just goes zero to one hundred, like in the movies, which doesn't happen very often. Yeah. But the nice thing about a long one is you slowly ramp yeah, up, so you can slowly make your you way. You take naps in between mm-hmm. contractions. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, it's just one of those weird things that like so many people experience. That's just kind of wild. Yeah. Like, how? How does this happen? Well, did you think you'd be getting an education in birthing yeah, so and talking about, about the church? Oh my God. And this your has trauma? been so great and so <laughs> educational and so validating. Like, I feel the same. Taylor, it was so. Okay. So you have your own podcast yeah, yeah, plug, called plug, plug, Sad plug. in the City. Yes, yes. I started a podcast. That's about, such a good name. <laughs> thank you so much. I couldn't believe it wasn't taken uh, about like being by coastal and being on the road and stuff. And a lot of it is about New York City and we get like so many emails now um, from people who have like moved or are about to move or in that like just like that tough transition period in your 20s and 30s usually where 
you go through a big breakup and you move or you get into a program and you have to move there. You get a cool job somewhere and it's your dream job, but you don't want to go to Wichita, but your dream job's yeah. in Wichita. Like just so much or you move for a relationship and like it was it was started because I was feeling that way personally. And like even if people aren't in the exact same situation that you're in, it's just so helpful to hear other people going like, I'm really lonely mm -hmm. over here mm -hmm. and I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know what I'm going to do next. So, uh, yes, that's the podcast out in the city. And then, yeah, the new Netflix special is called Look at You. It comes out March 8th. And uh, the old one's called Quarter Life Crisis, if you haven't seen that. Oh, no. And I'm on tour. And I'm on tour oh, still. On tour, yes. So, yeah, go to ttomcomedy.com for tickets. Um a bunch of stuff coming up. This is out next week. So mm -hmm. I think I'm in like Boise and Salt Lake City, Napa, Monterey. Fun. Um, Cincinnati, Green Bay, Nashville, Knoxville, New York City. Those are all the ones I can remember off the top of my head. But there is more. Vegas, L.A., Damn, good for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank Taylor you so Tomlinson, much for coming, everybody. Guys. We really enjoyed it and thanks for coming on. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to go get pregnant. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all do it together. Let's all do it together. <laughs> all right. Bye. Chat soon. Chat soon. Uh, that was so fun. Was thanks, guys. Thank you, Taylor. So funny.